Hello everyone, it's Farkad here, and in this video I'm going to cover the fourth major update for Sons of the Forest. Now this one isn't that interesting, to be honest, but it fixes a lot of things. It does add a couple of things, but yeah, you'll see what I mean. Now they did do one major change, and I did a whole separate video on it, but they've added a new system for finding bunker locations where they're not visible on your GPS tracker at the start. You have to go and find them, and how they've done it, they've added new point of interest discovery laptops. I recommend you go and see that video that I've made if you want to find them. Believe me, it's much more complex than you think. And they've also removed the location pins from the opening cutscene on the laptop screen. Thank you to Harvey for doing this comparison gif for me. It's what it used to look like before and after. Now they've added a new action cam item and the first round of footage tape. It's located in Bunker Residential, located on the map here. And it's right at the end of the bunker. It's in the morgue. It's on the corner desk right next to the stereo. I recommend you turn the stereo off before you start listening to it, otherwise you won't be able to hear anything. This video does contain kind of spoilers, but not really. So I was like, eh, it's the only real new thing they've added. So I'm including it here, but I'm not just showing you the footage on the camera. Harvey sent me the extracted video file so I can show you when it's full resolution. Here it is. The next change they've added is a very good one. They've added the ability to name save games. And when you go to save your game, you've got the option to change the name. I checked what happens if you go to override that save and the name stays with it. So it's gonna be much better at organizing your saves. I did go and check the save files within Windows and it doesn't change the number on the save. So the name is stored somewhere else, which still makes it difficult to identify the save in the save folder. But in game, it's gonna be a lot easier. The next change they've made is they've added a new lake to the golf course and it's named Golf Pond F. It's a rather big one. I'm not sure why they did it. They may have added other ponds too. I'm not sure yet. The next change is that they've updated the map to include all ponds and lakes on it. I made a video quite recently and I'm not sure if it was because of that video. I doubt it. It didn't really seem like a priority for them. Maybe they were already working on it. But every second in the footage that's shown, the map is switching between the old and the new one so you can see the differences. Because it's quite zoomed out, you might not see too much. But this reflects in the GPS in the game as well. So you'll be able to see these changes. And this is a map from when I did that video. I might put a link in here to show you what it was. Probably don't really need to know it anymore. but if you want to turn lakes off for building without mods, might be worth it. It's actually kind of cool. They've added binoculars, night vision goggles, wire and light bulbs to quick select slots. So you can now number them and equip them quickly like one, two, three, four, etc. Because wire and light bulbs are used in building. If you're doing a lot, might be handy to have that so you can get it done quicker. And if you press the number on the night vision goggles, they're just automatically equipped. It's like you're constantly wearing them, it seems. And the next change, they've brightened up night vision goggles. It seems by quite a lot, from what I can tell. And also, did you know you can use the binoculars while wearing the night vision goggles? <laughs> that was kind of funny. And there's this thing I found out that if you, and I do apologize for this because it's a bit disorientating to watch, but if you turn the night vision goggles on and off, it makes the world really bright for a few seconds. And if you keep doing it, you can see really far. This is probably something they're gonna patch, but I tested it in caves and it doesn't work like that. It just flickers. Like for one frame, you get brightness, I think. Only works outside at nighttime for that. I tested the new brightness on it and it is quite a bit better. I'd say it's about 40% at least, more brighter than it was before. I also played around with some Nvidia overlays, Alt F3 if you've got Shadowplay installed, and you can add filters like change the colors, increase the brightness, that sort of thing. I was having played with the colors and the tint to see what color actually looked better. There are better colors than green, I think, but it affects your game all the time. So even when you take them off, it's gonna affect it, so eh. In the next change, Kelvin can now carry two logs at a time. 
I did a test to see how efficient this actually is, and he's basically twice as efficient now. He can move logs much quicker. So what I learned recently, it was better to get him to clear the area rather than fill log holders and such, because he was just too slow at moving logs. But now that he can move two at a time, it's very good. It's possible that they didn't add this originally for balance purposes. Calvin really doesn't move this far. I've got it on time scale times five. This next change is strange and I couldn't really get it to work. It says low health deer and moose will sometimes lay down and rest. I did a lot of checks for this, trying to hit deer and moose. I mainly focused on the moose because they're a lot easier to hit and they're a lot more tanky. But I could not get them to lay down and rest at all. They just slowed down. I don't know if this is a bug in response to the change they've made. And yes, they can charge at you and it does a little bit of damage. It's not too bad. I think I actually got in its way more than it actually charged at me. I'm not sure what's going on with this. Maybe I triggered a bug. Maybe I didn't. I got no idea. They take a lot of hits, so try and get them in the head if you can. Also, try and stay out of their way. <laughs> you don't want to get charged at. The next one is increased deer bleeding and increased damage caused by hitting the front body. I couldn't figure out how to really test this and I ended up giving up because it wasn't that interesting. The next one is that skinned small animals will now have skinned visuals, specifically the rabbit, squirrel, eagle, duck, seagull, and land turtle. I only tested the rabbit. It's just like it was in the forest. Gets a little bit more realism. Next is that grenades and bombs will now play an explosion effect when thrown in water. It's just a visual effect and the effect is quite small. You'd think it'd be bigger than this, but this is what we've got. It doesn't make any water sound effects either, so you don't hear massive splashing sounds. They've added some ducks on the golf course. I went and checked them out because this update doesn't have that much. And yeah, it's pretty glitchy. I don't know what was going on, but all the reflections and shadows and textures were just going crazy. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Maybe because I've got no trees in this world and that's what I was using. <laughs> I'll have a look at it. But yeah, if you build on the golf course, you can have some friends. The next change, this is actually a very good one. They've added a north arrow guide to the mini map. That's down the bottom right. This should make it easier to navigate. Such a simple change too. There's no north arrow on the GPS though. You are the north arrow. In the next change, Animal Hide and Tech Mesh will now be greyed out on the grab bag when interacting with an armor rack. I covered this in the last update when they've added the armor rack in. It showed that you could add it, but it would just glitch out. It didn't do anything. It was just a bug. And yeah, still a positive change, I guess. They've added a harsh slope limitation to block riding the Night V up steep slopes. I did a test on it. It still can go up pretty steep slopes, I think. I went up the big mountain in the middle of the map but it does reach a point where it just stops. So it is a bit of a limitation. It doesn't slow down, it just stops. And I tried turning it around and reversing up to see if I could glitch it that way, and it just didn't move. So they're already nerfing the Night V. It's probably to stop people glitching. The next changes affect Virginia, there's three. Virginia's GPS will now retain the signed icon when given to her. She visits more often if she has a good affinity with you and she goes to more waterfalls. That's the annoying part. She just pisses off and goes and does whatever she wants. Uh, I guess they're giving her a personality. Now to get the GPS to retain the assigned icon when given to her, I spent probably five minutes trying to figure out how to do this because you can't just take it off and put it back on. If you get a GPS icon and change the thing and go to put it on, it doesn't work that way. The way you've got to do it to get it to work is you've actually got to put away all the GPS locators you do have. So stick them on a stick or something just to get them all out of your inventory and then just have one in your inventory and make sure she doesn't have one on her. Change it to the icon that you want it to be, then give it to her and it will stay that way. Otherwise it will just stay that green GPS icon. So when I did it like that, it worked. She had a love heart icon. It was easy to tell her apart. As you can see, as she's running past, the icon's running past too. So that's your solution. Not a hard one, just an annoying one. They'll probably fix it soon, unless I screwed it up somehow. Now, this is a strange change they've added. They've added a wetness amount per character that increases when submerged in water or cleaning in water and reduces over time when not. So I pulled up the console command and had player stats listed on the side. I increased the size so you can actually see what's going on. You only get wet when you're under the water. So if your head's above the water and the rest of your body is under it, you're not getting wet. But if you submerge your head, you do get wet. And how fast you get affected is determined by your clothing. If you're wearing that wetsuit, the swimming gear, the scuba gear, not the rebreather, you won't take any wetness. But if you're wearing something like the pajamas, you get wet pretty instantly. The thing is though, you become dry so fast, it's not funny. It's like, what's the point of this? And that's what got me thinking. They are trialing more survival mechanics with this. They're probably gonna increment changes to this to give it more bigger effects over time without pissing the players off with annoying survival 
survival features. That's what I think it is, I'm not certain. The effects didn't seem like that much, but the game I was playing is during summer and during the day. If it was during winter and this wasn't a lake so I could swim in it and I was getting wet, I'm sure it would have some pretty negative effects on me. Let me know what you think this might be, but I'm pretty sure it's a survival feature they're gonna be working in progress. Now the next one is all the freeform building changes and they're mostly fixes. There's nothing new that's been added. But what I've done is I put them all together and I've put them on the screen right now. You don't have to read them. I've already read them and I can't make sense of just about any of them. It is so difficult to understand the building system in this game, even when they're explaining it through patch notes. I don't know, I might be wrong, but looking at it, I'm just getting confused. So I'm assuming they're good things because they're fixes. Unless you've got some insight, let me know in the comments, but otherwise I've got no idea. However, I did find a strange bug. If you place a half log underneath, it does this weird chopping off thing and hanging down, it's really weird. I don't know if that's new or not. Now here is your five second spoiler warning and also know that Calvin can still cut down tree houses. <laughs> the next change is longer Timmy fighting demon boss intro animation and it triggers when you get fairly close to him. Usually it's not this bright so there's a good chance you're going to miss most of it. I think they might need to work on it because they probably spent a long time trying to animate this to make it look good or maybe they're just counting on you not seeing it but it does look pretty good. What it shows is that Timmy can beat the absolute crap out of this demon boss so Timmy's still got mutant powers it seems. He grabs a by the head and smashes it. Quite funny to watch, but then he gets yeeted into the cave hole and that's where he pisses off and he leaves you to fight the boss. Now the next thing isn't a change, but I found a cheese you can do and I wasn't even looking for a cheese and I found it. So what I found out is that if you try to escape through the cave hole slide thing, I was heading down towards Timmy because I was gonna see if there was any changes to the ending and I heard a bang behind me. So I turned around and found that he was trying to get to me still. So what I did was pull the cross out and just start clicking and I thought, well, he's not taking much damage because I've got show enemy health on there. So what I did is I put my auto clicker on and just stood there and I went and started dinner and vacuumed the house. And I ever did it. I think it took four minutes to kill him from doing this. I did an extra three minutes, it seems, because, yeah, I was busy. I didn't realize the fight had finished. But I went back out and he's dead. So you can cheese him. And I should probably know this. Also, they've increased the incentive. You get five mutant armor if you skin him compared to what it used to be, which was one. Now, he's got 2,000 hit points. The smaller demons have 250 hit points, which means he's got eight times as much health in the smaller demons, which means that you should get eight pieces of mutant armor, not five. By that logic, I think that should be the way it is. Well, you know, still five's pretty generous, I guess. He ain't an easy boss to beat, though. Unless you do that cheese, of course. And finally, you cannot ride the helicopter if you choose not to go. I flew up on top of the helicopter and stood up on top of it to see what would happen. You can stay on it for a little bit, but you end up falling off because the helicopter goes faster than a human. Never would have thought that, though. Anyway, that's it. And now I'm just going to show the rest of the patch notes. There is heaps of them. And yeah, these are all the ones I didn't cover in this video. There's quite a lot. The next update's three weeks away. I think they've been doing them in two week increments. I think, but now the next one's gonna be three weeks. And they have said that in that one, they're going to deliver on the log sled. They're gonna add it to the game. I'm guessing they wanted to polish it up because they had a lot of issues with that back in the forest. Whether they're carrying over the same thing or building it from scratch, I'm not sure. I'm guessing we're gonna have to wait and see. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.